Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 372, I believe it is, of the Daily Weaver Morning Show here on Pride Media Network. Yeah. 371. Yeah, because Friday's 369, Monday 370, today's two. This is Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's Tuesday. (laughs) <laughs> yes yeah okay so 371 <laughs> yes <it is> tuesday. <laughs> today recording day is tuesday <laughs> april 30th 2024 and it is a gray and a slightly rainy day here at the ottawa beaver lodge i'm your host the eager beaver pronouns he him hey mr beaver a and with me as always is my good friend mr grizzly big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors the pepper master the miss v mysteries from corbin moon publishing and canadian tarot.com we have a nibble for you today apologies for the late start uh having lots of tech issues today but uh we think we've got them resolved, so mm-hmm. hopefully we'll have a smooth rest of show, but it will be a shorter one for you today because, well, well we started about 15 minutes late. <laughs> yeah. Apologies for um, that. Uh, but just, uh, yeah, quick, this is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Quick one for you. Yes. Uh, it's this man's birthday today. You're like, who's that? Paul Gross. Yeah. 65 today. Oh, neat. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. happy birthday, Paul. Gross. Yeah, um, One of my favorite Canadian writers, producers, directors, actors. Yeah. If you've, ever, if, if you've never seen the film Hyena Road, you should watch it. If that is, if you can handle uh, a, a, a film about war, it's what it's Afghanistan and Canadians and our contribution there. And it is um, in the vein of saving private Ryan when it comes to the realism of what took place. Hmm. Good recommendation. I haven't seen it yet. It's a great um, film. Right. And uh, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? You know, despite this miserable weather, because I did take out Miss Lola, who uh, is sitting right beside me, bundled up in a blanket after being outside in the cold, wet rain, for a, a, a Dogo Argentino, which apparently they don't like cold or wet. It, I can't get her in the bathtub. I can't give her a shower. But she wants to stay out in the rain. And it's miserable cold. There was no other dogs out this morning. Not even the Newfoundland this morning. Just her. Going crazy, chasing squirrels. And I'm walking around in my raincoat because I knew what it was like out. And I get back in the house and I'm like, I should be feeling down in the dumps because it is miserable out there. But watching this silly dog chase squirrels in the pouring rain <laughs> really does something for my mental health, man. It really does. It just lifts me up. I'm like... Her breed likes hot weather. She's from Argentina. They don't get cold there like we do here. She's out running around in the rain, chasing squirrels, having the time of her life. So, you know, that just lifts me up. So my mental health is great today. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Ah, man. Um, I don't have clips for you 
uh, unfortunately. Maybe you do, Mr. Uli, that you picked up on your own. Um, but um, there are, yesterday, and again, I hate having to open the show speaking about him. Yeah, I know. Me too. Uh, but Pierre Payev gave an address yesterday to the Canadian Association uh, of Police, something or other. And um, he went back. Uh, the conservatives like to do the stereotype thing that uh, they're tough on crime. Mm -hmm. Not sure how that's true, considering <clears throat> the, the, there's nothing to support that. They allegedly commit. But anyway, um, he went there and um, had some extremely colorful language. Yeah, I'm trying to find the clip. Of how uh, multiple murderers would be coming out of jails in a box. Now, we're not saying that multiple murderers should be released. No, no. However, there are constitutional principles in this country that suggest, just as we suggest that uh, you are innocent until proven guilty, that every person is redeemable. Even though we know some aren't, the presumption is that everyone is. Correct. So when you start talking about people we all agree, we find socially unpalatable, will come out of prisons in a box that kind of eliminates even the fig leaf of pretense that we have constitutionally. He um, also said something like, um, we are going to make sure that these crimes are punished severely and we will uh, pass laws to make that happen. And uh, we will do the things that we need to do to make sure that those laws will be considered constitutional, if you know what I mean. Well, here's a quote directly from him. Something like that. There you go. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev says he would use whatever tools the Constitution allows to pass criminal justice laws if his party forms the next government. Speaking to the Canadian Police Association on Monday, let me just move this so I can see it better. Speaking to the Canadian Police Association on Monday, Polyev promised to implement more stringent requirements for bail and make it harder for convic convicted murders to transfer out of maximum security prisons. All of my proposals are constitutional, Polyev said. We will make them constitutional using whatever tools the Constitution allows me to use to make them constitutional. I think you know exactly what I mean. So, those that two is statements really back -back, bad. Yes, those two statements back to back are contradictory. Yes. All my proposals are constitutional. And I'll make them constitutional. And I'll make them constitutional, allowing what the Constitution allows me to use. In other so, words. In other words, they're not constitutional. No. Nope. And I am campaigning to be the leader of a nation in which I am going to invoke the notwithstanding clause to affect bail, parole, and transfers, to literally meddle in the administration of justice. Yeah. I am going to be judge, jury, and executioner, except an executioner because we don't have a death penalty. How much you want to bet he'd try bringing it back? I think he'd float the idea. So he's literally, let's put it this way. If he is signaling that he is willing to be the first prime minister to invoke the notwithstanding clause, in order to affect people's rights to bail. Mm -hmm. And let's remember the global overall context that he is making this pitch to the Canadian um, Police Association. Um, in the wake of the Umar Zamir. Yeah, no kidding. Thing, where uh, police were literally going to railroad a brown man into jail for killing a police officer. And they were saying that he did it with intent. 
malicious intent because it's first degree murder. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and for people wondering also, um, the jury was allowed to consider lesser charges down to manslaughter and whatnot. And they decided not guilty on all of them. Four lesser charges, not guilty on all of those two. So they were going to railroad this man. Absolutely. An X they number of days later, they, they he's in front do of it. Yep. Yeah. An X number of days later, he's in front of the Canadian the Canadian Police Association, saying, "I will invoke." Well, if you know what I mean. Yes. Because he doesn't want to say it out loud. Of course not. Now, if it was such a great policy that would keep us all safe, you think he'd have no problem saying it out loud? Just like if he really renounced Alex Jones, he would have no problem saying his name. As he's well, renouncing so. him, right? So and he, he's been called out in the house to to denounce him, and he won't. Yep, won't do it. Yeah, that, hey, that's fine. That's the vote he wants to court. He's yeah. sending the message like this, but he won't say it like this. Just like he didn't put his name to anything denouncing Christine Anderson as well, right? This is the vote that he wants. This is right. This is just the variation on the "I didn't read the T-shirt." It's a variation on "I didn't read the T-shirt." But somebody who was already saying about 17 months before an election, yeah, that Constitution thing, when it comes to bail, parole, all that kind of stuff, prisoner transfers. Yeah, we don't need that. Well, what I am hearing is that when I am prime minister, I am going to do what I damn well want because we got this little thing in the Constitution that says notwithstanding clause, so I'm just going to throw a notwithstanding clause on any bill that would be abhorrent, and that's what you're getting for the next four years. And he's starting with bail. His first one that he's announcing it with is interference in the justice system. This is the guy that said, I'm going to let provinces do what provinces want to do when they want to invoke notwithstanding clause in the Constitution. So right now we have Danielle Smith in Alberta taking control of over all the cities. We had Doug Ford's previous attempt when he redid city council mm -hmm. in the middle of an election and then tried to do what Danielle is doing, but a little with a little more subtlety with strong mayors. Daniel Smith is just skipping the whole strong mayor's thing. So screw that. I'm just taking it. I'm the mayor now. Look at me. Look basically, at me. I'm the basically. mayor now. Yeah. All your towns, all your hamlets, all your cities. I'm the mayor now. Then you've got in Quebec the whole ethnocentrist thing. Bill 96, Bill 21. And now you have the leader of His Majesty's allegedly loyal allegedly. opposition saying, you know what, the Constitution, let's just NWC the whole damn thing. And let's start with the administration of justice. This is uh, this days isn't a slippery after, slope. This isn't a days, slippery slope. It's way beyond days, that. Yeah, and days after the other context, there's Omar Zamir. Mm -hmm. Days after he emerged from that trailer, yeah. this is what he's trying to change the channel with. He doesn't want to talk about what he did in that trailer. For those moments that he went inside, the video camera wasn't recording them. Why does he emerge from that trailer with his shirt tucked out? He doesn't want to have that conversation. No, of course not. And he proposes switching the channel by probably the listen, when we're talking about in this day and age, where outrage is just basic stock and trade, 
when there actually comes something to be genuinely outraged about. Well, and this is it. I mean, I'm going to reread reread this sentence to you because it is astonishing to me that somebody would say this in the House of Commons. Or sorry, not that, not that. Sorry, to the Canadian Police Association. All of my proposals are constitutional. We will make them constitutional using whatever tools the Constitution allows me to use to make them constitutional. Because they're not exactly what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. Like, literally, he is flaunting authoritarianism in your face. This is a dictator. This is a dictatorial speech. If I'm wrong, tell me how I'm wrong. He just said, I will use whatever tools are necessary to make it constitutional. All my proposals are constitutional, and I'll use... We'll make them constitutional using whatever tools the Constitution allows me to use to make them constitutional, which means the notwithstanding clause. Which allows you to override the constitutional when you have something that is not constitutional. Yeah, they'll override the Constitution. Yeah, exactly. So this, this is an authoritarian. This is a dictator. This is the guy who says he's going to make you more free than ever, but God forbid if any of his MPs go to the World Economic Forum, he won't allow that. Wait a minute. That is the antithesis of freedom. That is not freedom when you restrict my movement to at, freely attend the World Economic Forum, of, exactly. which, of which his former boss, Stephen Harper, attended many times. Yep. And Michelle rempel Garner has come out and said, it's not what you think. Settle down. Polyev is, being, is, is rage farming over this. She has publicly yep. stated that. Because, but doing this again, right, and the context is apparently no party leader is more supportive of Israel than Pierre Polyev. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because every time he says World Economic Forum, that's not code for something anti-Semitic. What do they say? Globalist? Which is a dog whistle. Globalist. It's a dog whistle. It's an anti-Semitic dog whistle. We're, we're dealing with somebody here who is power hungry and unhinged. To say that he's going to use whatever is available at his disposal to make something constitutional, which means he's just going to throw the thing out the window. If the conservatives ever attain power, say goodbye to your freedom. Say goodbye to being able to speak out publicly against the government. Say goodbye to, to fly a flag that says to hell with you, Polyev. Yeah, under this version, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you can sure as hell bet that if there's a Prime Minister Polyev, there will not be any fuck Pierre Pierre. Fuck no. Polyev flags. No, he'll have oh, you arrested wow. for it. He'll have you arrested for it. He doesn't believe in freedom of expression. He doesn't believe in free speech. His free speech is, I am free to say whatever I want, and if I don't like what you have to say, I'm going to censure you for it. <sighs> to the gulag... I mean, this is an authoritarian in waiting. He just admitted it. I will use whatever allows me to make it constitutional. That is not coded language. It's not coded. It's not a dog whistle. It's straight up, I'm going to fuck people over because I can. It's literally going to the place and say, hey, guys. Make me prime minister and. Uh, I'll give you unfettered power. You want to see uh, jackboots? You want to see people actually getting stomped by horses? Elect this man prime minister. Elect his party, because we don't elect a prime minister. Elect his party. Give them a majority. Watch what happens. Remember what Stephen Harper said? You won't recognize Canada when I'm done with it. What was it Farley Mowat said about Stephen Harper? Stephen Harper is the most dangerous person ever to attain the office of prime minister in this country. These are authoritarians. These are not progressive conservatives. These are not conservatives. These are reform party stalwarts that want to bend you to their religious beliefs. And I don't know if he has any religious beliefs. I think he just plays along those lines because it can help gain him a seat of power. Remember when Harper was sworn in, the Bible he swore, he put his hand on to swear his oath? 
was the PVCC Bible, and all the leaders of that church were in the front row. This is who we're dealing with. David Wallace told us this. He pointed it out. He showed us. We are dealing with an unhinged individual who will do whatever he can to get power. I mean, he just did a roadside stop with a bunch of Dagalon people. He doesn't care about anything but power and money. That is it. That's it. And he will say whatever he can to get them. Doesn't matter. Didn't we just look at a speech from him the other day saying, no more deportations. We need to ease, increase immigration. And then he'll turn around the next day and say, too much immigration has led to overpopulation and not enough housing. Well, which one is it, Pierre? Which one is it? Do you want more immigrants or do you not want more immigrants? Or is it just convenient for you to say it to that group of people? And you somehow seem to think you're in a bubble when you do it and it won't be spread across the world because of this thing we call, have called the World Wide Web, the Internet. Everybody has a high-definition camera in their pocket. This guy, is just, he's living in his own world. Yeah, the problem is, however, that a lot of people are in that world with him. Oh, yes. You too know, many. I'm, too many. We, um, we've had conversations where we touched upon uh, people who had people they cared about and loved that were starting to be pulled to that side. Mm -hmm. and, um, fortunately for the people with whom we were speaking, uh, that didn't happen. They were able to intervene. Mm -hmm. But um, we are losing. We are losing a lot of our citizens to this yes. movement, to this thing. Um, that device, yes. that's that high definition camera that we have in our hands all the time is also a direct portal. Yes, I know. It's a double-edged sword, right? But a direct portal to your brain. Mm -hmm. For anybody that wants to try to send you a message to influence you in some way or form has a way to do that. You're always reachable now, if you choose You're to be. Always if you choose to be. Yeah. Well, and, let's, uh, let's look at the authoritarianism bent on that party. Have you seen this? I don't know if you've seen this or not, so I will share it with you right now and put this on the screen and it's because it's what I wrote about at the start of the show. Andrew Scheer. Mark Carney wants to take over from Justin Trudeau. He should appear in Parliament and explain his policies. How high would he hike the carbon tax? How much new debt will he rack up? Canadians deserve to know. Will the NDP supporter call to have him testify or protect him? Mark Carney is a private citizen. He's not in politics. That is authoritarianism. They want to pull a private citizen before them to question him because they don't like what he's saying. That is a shot across the bow against freedom of expression in this country. That is them pissing on the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That is a prime example of it. We are in a very dangerous place right now. I'm not joking. I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic either. This is a member of Parliament, former leader, former Speaker of the House, who wants to pull a private citizen before Parliament to question him because of what he said in a public forum. He is not a politician. And here's the thing. What he said isn't illegal. It isn't immoral. It isn't outlandish. Millions of people are saying what he's saying. But they want to pick on a private citizen. So what happens when us, the two of us who have this program, who speak out against them damn near daily, what will happen to us? Are we next? Are we going to get hauled before Parliament to ask what our opinions are? Two private citizens who literally 
are exercising our rights as Canadians to freely speak our minds and call them out on their lies, call them out on their authoritarianism, authoritarianism. call them out on, on would-be dictators if they ever ascend to a position of power. I'm not being hyperbolic, and I'm not being alarmist. This is what is happening. They are dictators in waiting, but they'll accuse the Prime Minister on a daily of being a dictator. And when other people do it, they just play right along beside it. I haven't seen anybody get arrested for flying the fuck Trudeau flags, have you? No. No. Not at all. But um, I think it was Frank Graves. I'm looking for the, the tweet of his. Um, he does this thing where he assesses his, sorry, assesses people's um, ability to be buy into misinformation. So he'll present like five statements, like for example, the government is hiding data on COVID deaths, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, and then he asks, do you believe this is true? This is not true. And for most parties, you know, they're pretty good. The supporters of most parties, they're pretty good at recognizing this disinformation. But when you look at the graph, it's like the overwhelming majority when it comes to misinformation are CPC and PPC voters. For example, I have uh, openness by disinformation here. They have a question, for example, as we enter the annual flu season, how likely are you to seek uh, each of the following this fall, a flu shot, a COVID-19 booster, a COVID-19 vaccine and flu shot at the same time if available. This, Canadians that are among the best, best informed, they have the notes. And then of the most disinformed, they have the notes as well. And when you're looking at the bars at the graph, the, the most disinformed, it's like, 73% say they will not get a flu shot. Mm -hmm. But only 23% of the most informed say they won't. We're talking 50% difference. The gaps are absolutely phenomenal when they're talking about that. And he's mentioned it here. What is it here? There we go. It's concerning that CPC voters are not somewhat more likely to believe falsehoods like governments are intentionally concealing the real number of vaccine deaths or inflation rose last year or carbon emissions are not linked to climate change. Not several times higher. Huge dimensions. Um, and I want you, kids and cubs, to pay attention at the order of magnitude here, okay? He's talking about huge effects. But let's step out of the realm of beliefs and look for at support for the freedom movement. For simplicity, let's compare the Liberal Party and Conservative Party voters. 2% of Liberal Party voters support the freedom movement. For the Conservative Party voters, it's not twice as high or 10 times as high, it's 26 times higher. 52%. These effects are absolutely huge. Oh, yeah. They're astonishing. There is, I read these numbers and I tell myself. I tell myself, come and convince me that there is not a serious, for lack of a better word, brainwashing exercise going on. And 26 more times, conservative voters are 26 more times likely to be supportive of the Freedom Convoy than a liberal voter. And 
it is predominantly males under 50. Not a surprise there. How much is that as Russian uh, bots that are influencing these people? And I, I, I say that with all sincerity, and I am asking the question. I'm not making an accusation. I am asking the question. How much of that influence is coming from Russian bots? Because we've been led to believe that there's quite a bit of it. Foreign interference, right? So it's, it's broad. It's more broad based than that. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. But according to Frank Graves from uh, Ecos, the under 50 males are the bedrock. So the men in our lives who are 50 and under, there's literally massive effort to try to get them to believe because it seems that they are the more likely to mm -hmm. believe that everything actually is broken. Well, they're preaching to the choir, right? Immigrants and that the Jewish people are controlling everything with space lasers. Yes. And Marge wants space lasers now. Did you hear that? And that teachers are trying to, you know, spend, 32% of the curriculum time in class trying to convince your child to change their gender. And that the government of this nation devised, helped China create COVID. Because that's what they're saying with the Wuhan lab, the, the lab here, Winnipeg lab. Yeah. So we gave them the genetic material so yeah. that they could but then they can unleash it. That's why Canada and China were working together on a vaccine so that they can all put that chip into us to turn us all into 5G receptors. I'm just... Mm. The same people who claim to believe that we all have a chip in our body are the same people that thinks it's okay to suspend the constitution for people we don't like. Yeah. Pierre also said in that speech, something like, um, I'm going to let the people decide whether or not my laws are constitutional. Just like the common man is the expert. I have the quote here for you. I'm going to use, so basically I'm going to invoke the notwithstanding law or clause for any law that I'm going to pass that I know is constitutional. Because I don't need no damn courts or judges to let me know whether or not my laws are constitutional. I'm going to let the people. It's literally mob rule. Well, here's the exact quote, and it's cute because it's factually incorrect. I will be the democratically elected prime minister, democratically accountable to the people, and they can then make the judgments themselves on whether they think my laws are constitutional. We do not elect a prime minister in this country. We never have. We elect a parliament. The notwithstanding clause, or Section 33 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, gives parliaments in Canada the power to override certain portions of the Charter for five-year terms when passing legislation. Once invoked, Section 33 prevents any judicial review of the legislation in question. <sighs> now, He's hopefully. telling us exactly who he is. Now, hopefully the key word in that sentence is certain mm -hmm. provisions because uh, we are, we, certain Canada, we are getting to a point where we need to take these cases to the Supreme Court and get the Supreme Court to determine where and when that not everything in the Constitution has a reasonable limit. Mm -hmm. I would assume that for judicial consistency, that would also apply to usage of the notwithstanding clause. And right now, 
um, the fact that our Supreme Court is nothing like the American one might be our only saving grace because somebody's going to take that to court and hopefully our Supreme Court justice to see what this guy is up to is going to say, uh, no, you cannot use the notwithstanding clause to do that. Well, according to law professor Errol Mendez at the University of Ottawa, he told CBC News that in cases where the Supreme Court has made a ruling, the only option a government would have is using Section 33. No federal government has used the clause, but a number of provincial governments have. Quebec invoked the clause in passing a language reform law that limits the use of English in the public service. Ontario also used it to pass back-to-work legislation for education workers in 2022. Mendez cautioned that using the clause at the federal level would send a signal to provincial governments and could lead to normalizing its use. Essentially, it would be the straw that will break the camel's back and lead to, eventually, the denigration of the Charter as a whole. It really shows there has not been a thought given to the long-term impact on Canada Canada, if we allow this thing to be used so frequently. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing. You want to talk about driving away direct foreign investment? That'll do it. What company is going to want to relocate to a nation where bail is optional? Depending on the whim of the Prime Minister. Yeah. Or how much he likes you. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have a constitution, but that's merely a suggestion. Merely a suggestion. (laughs) How does that attract capital? How does that create jobs? How does that grow the... There's no companies, especially European companies, right? A couple of years ago, I think it was the NCAA March Madness tournament pulled out of North Carolina when they had that... Uh, abortion ban that was like really going insane on bathroom bills oh that one yes 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 i couldn't remember what it was but i do remember it was something along those lines yeah so they relocated the tournament to another state they said yeah sorry we're not coming to your state so it's like we have you know we probably have transgender people on 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 a few of our basketball teams throughout the whole thing so uh, oh yeah oh no it wasn't ncaa wasn't it the nba all-star game or something. Might have been. I, I I don't recall. It was exactly. a it was a big thing. It was a big event though. Huge. Yes. So a G seven nation that turns around and just say, you know what, elect me prime minister, and uh, I will make the constitution optional. Mm-hmm. That's not good for business. That's not good for business. Likes safe, stable, predictable environments where they're going to make an investment and they know what's going to be doing whatever it is for the next 15, 20, 30 years before somebody comes and tries to upset the apple cart. Saying that the Constitution henceforth is going to be optional, that that just pulls the rug out from under all of that. Mm -hmm. That destroys in one move all the work that all previous governments combined have done to get us to where we are today. Yeah. This is not normal. Uh, Mr. Rizzi, do we have a show? We do, sir. Short, sweet, to the point, uh, direct, and um, a dire warning. A dire warning that our our sacred democracy is dancing on the razor's edge. This is a red alert. Yeah. Oh no, it is. We're not. This is not hyperbolic. This is not being alarmist. This is literally a red alert. Remember when I said twenty twenty four is the year of the pushback? Now we really have to push back because this man wants to rob you of everything. He just admitted it. And here's the thing, I will use gonna, the, I'll use the to Constitution to make it constitutional, right? I'll use the Constitution to make it constitutional. Then he gets his new law, then he uses the Constitution again to make it more constitutional, which means he'll just tear the whole damn thing up when he's done with it. Yeah, well, that's a full speech that I hope is available online because I need to go uh, watch that one from beginning to end. Yeah, I can't, I can't find that, the actual speech. I, I just have quotes the, from the article. Yeah. Because those were the 
the two that made the press. Wonder what other little gems were in there. Yeah, no kidding. Yeesh. Wake up, Canada. As I keep on saying, eyes wide open. Oh, yeah. Democracy is not a spectator sport. If you want your democracy to remain a democracy, you're going to have to get involved this time around. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless, and you have the mouths from which we want the words to come. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to not miss an episode, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl. If you scan that QR code that's under my chin, that will bring you to our pod page. You go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver or case letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that will bring you to our pod page. And if you click subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you'd like to support us in other ways, why don't you make like Kit Elaine and go to our true north eager beaver media incorporated YouTube page where you can click like share and subscribe. When you do that, that makes us so happy. Oh, I see somebody scanned a little code right there. Thank you so much, whoever's doing that. Much love to you. And uh, that way, uh, when you click like, share, and subscribe, also, you don't have to miss an episode, and the sharing, well, shows you care. And if you'd like to help us in another way, well, the QR code right by Mr. Grizzly's head, that brings you to our coffee page or the Beaver Lodge's Emergency Hydration Fund, where uh, our friends, Coffee, Caesar, Guinness and hot chocolate are waiting there to help us write, produce, market, and uh, deliver this show to you. So if you would like to help us make rent here at the Beaver Lodge, wink, uh, <laughs> if you just scan that little QR code, that will bring you there. Anything that you can contribute uh, would be absolutely uh, most appreciated. But of course, the gift of your attention is the one we appreciate most. We love hearing from you. So if you'd like to write to us, true north eager beaver at gmail.com or on our Twitter feed at true eager or in the comment sections here uh, on our YouTube feed if you got it. Um, we read everything. So we appreciate uh, you communicating to us. And uh, we've received uh, some uh, messages uh, from Kit Lynn. Just want to let you know that we've seen them and that we've read them. And uh, thank you very much. Um, democracy is something that you do. Uh, yeah. Um, this would be a good time to write a letter. Oh yeah. Or ask for a meeting. This would be this this would be a damn good time to ask for a meeting. Because right now this is still at the trial balloon stage. So if a lot of us, particularly if you live in a writing that has a CPC and B, um, you better pick up that phone and. Uh, Go and ask for me and say, what the hell did he just say? Not on my watch. So if you go ahead with that, not only will I not vote for you, I will make it my mission to make sure that nobody does. This is not, this is something we need to nip in the bud pretty quickly. Oh, yes. Right? From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to you and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom for us? I do. We are teetering on the edge right now as a democracy in this nation. And I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I am trying to say, pay attention, folks. Pay attention. He just told us exactly who he is. He's been saying it for a long time, but he spelled it out in plain, I'm going to use his words, Anglo-Saxon terms to let us know exactly who he is and what he will do to us. You need to write your member of parliament as soon as you can and let them know this is not cool. Let them know that you are upset because this man will rob us of everything. He just said he would. I'm not being alarmist. He just told us he's going to change the constitution to suit his needs. And that can't happen. That constitution took years to put together by learned individuals who love this country. He doesn't love this country. He loves power and money. He doesn't want to govern. He wants to lord over us. Be ever vigilant. 2024 is the year of pushback. We got to start pushing back real hard now. Yep. All right, Mr. Grizzly, please roll those credits. You are listening to 
a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. No Easter egg for me today, kids. I don't know if Mr. Grizzly has one. Just pen to paper and pick up the phone. That's all I got for you, really. Um, we are in a perilous position, and if we don't be ever vigilant, we will lose what we have. So write the letter, make the call, yeah. do what you can, and inform everybody. Inform everyone you know of what we are on the, the brink of losing. Take a moment to do democracy and then have a beaverific day. I'll see you. <laughs>